According to Lord of the Rings fans, there's still a lot to love and enjoy about Peter Jackson's movies, but there are some scenes that just went too far for anyone to believe in them. They go from Galadriel's CGI face to Legolas's acrobatic moves, and the list is actually a bit long. On that note, let's look at the moments in The Lord of the Rings that made everyone cringe hard. First up at number 12, Gandalf with staff swinging action. We've no problem with the fact that Gandalf is a very good wizard. The man fought a Balrog all by himself for a few days, going from the lowest dungeon to the highest peak, but it's funny to watch him swing his staff at an orc with as much force as a 74-year-old English actor can, and then watch the orc do all kinds of somersaults because he was hit so hard. In fact, there are a lot of battle scenes where the stunts look about as real as they would in a low-budget 1980s action movie. We're sure that multiple takes of fight scenes weren't possible, given how big the three movies are and how much work has already gone into pre-production, but it's hard to get into this story when you don't really believe the good guys will win. Coming up at number 11, the oblivious ring wraiths. No matter how much explanation is given in the books, it doesn't matter if it doesn't make it to the script and screen. So it's said that the Nazgul can always feel the ring's presence, focusing on it whenever someone puts it on. But in the movies, the ring wraiths miss Frodo even when he's right in front of them more than once. In Fellowship, they miss him and the other hobbits on the way to Bree, and in Return of the King, the Witch King himself misses Frodo on the steps of Sirith Ungul. If they had done their jobs better, it's clear that the plot would have been a lot shorter. The fact that the Ringwraiths didn't notice was worth the story we got out of it, though. Next at number 10, Gollum tricking Frodo with the Lambus. No doubt the friendship between Frodo and Sam is one of the best in The Lord of the Rings. Their bond is almost impossible to break, and Frodo probably wouldn't have been able to finish his quest without Sam. But then there's a whole part where Gollum accuses Sam of eating bread, and Frodo believes him and sends Sam down the mountain to wander in the wilderness until he dies. Not only does this go against who they are, but it also doesn't make much sense. Fans asked Frodo where he thought Sam was going since they were in the enemy's land. Even more, they couldn't believe that Frodo would be so stupid as to believe Gollum. The whole thing just makes us want to cringe. Coming up at number 9, making Gimli comic relief. Gimli is one of the best characters in The Lord of the Rings, according to many people. Some Redditors, on the other hand, cringe at how the movies show him. Gimli, played by John Rhys Davies, has some of the most awkward jokes and one-liners in the series. He's often the comic relief, along with Merry and Pippin. Gimli is the only dwarf who isn't just a cameo at the beginning of the Fellowship, and we think he deserves better than to be the punchline of jokes that make other characters laugh. In Return of the King, he says, salted pork, at Helm's Deep, his chainmail doesn't fit, he plays a drinking game that gets him drunk, and he falls off a horse that won't move. Gimli isn't just funny though, he's also a great fighter with a big heart. He also goes through one of the biggest changes. Remember how he used to hate elves, but now he calls Legolas his best friend? What's more at number 8, the convenient ghost army. Even though the start of the Battle of Pelennor Fields is great, the end of it is a bit of a letdown. To be clear, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli's arrival at the Horland Docks is the most important part of the battle, but the huge army of floating green warriors behind them seems out of place after all the heroic actions that took place on the ground. In the original book, the army doesn't glow green, but it does help get rid of the Black Fleet of Umbar. This scene is mentioned in the extended versions of the movies. After that, Aragorn lets them go and sails up the river to help Minas Tirith with the men from the nearby coastlands who are still alive. His arrival ends up tipping the scales in favor of the good guys, but it's hardly an emerald-infused ghost bonanza that overpowers everything else. When the army of the dead shows up in the movie, it makes you wonder, why didn't you just have this unstoppable juggernaut show up a half hour earlier? It makes the heroes of the past seem a little less heroic, to be honest, and it feels like Jackson went back to some of his old school horror roots. Not that it doesn't look fun, but it also looks severely out of place. Up next at number 7, Legolas's acrobatics. Legolas is one of the strongest warriors in the trilogy as a whole, but from the point of view of Redditors, some of his stunts are a little cringeworthy. There's a particularly frustrating part when Legolas is shooting at the wargs as they charge 
charge, and then he turns around and does this really weird physics-defying move to pull himself up on a passing horse. It's clear that the point is to show how skilled Legolas is, but even though it's a lot like the character in the book, it doesn't always follow the laws of physics and is one of the movie's moments that just goes a bit too far to be believable. Followed by, at number 6, Faramir's Taking of the Hobbits to Askeliath. Since the movies are based on Tolkien's books, it was inevitable that they'd change it. Some of these worked, but others were so bad that they genuinely made us laugh. We weren't really happy that Faramir took Frodo to Minas Tirith instead of letting him go, like in the books. There are two main things that make this move cringeworthy. First, it goes against Faramir's character because he's one of the few people who can stand up to the ring, and this is important to juxtapose him from his father and brother. Just as important, he quickly changes his mind, making us wonder why he did it in the first place. Now for number five, the fake out deaths. It's pretty clear Lord of the Rings isn't afraid to kill off characters. We just wish they'd do it in a realistic way. Boromir, Haldir, Saruman, and Theoden are the main characters, but there are a lot of other elves and men in the background. But the movies seem eager to trick people into thinking the characters, who are too important to die, are ever in life-threatening danger with more than one fake out death. In Fellowship, Frodo gets stabbed by a cave troll. Then, in the Two Towers, Merry and Pippin are supposedly crushed by a horse, and Aragorn falls off a cliff in the same movie. In Return of the King, Frodo dies after Shelob paralyzes him, and in the extended edition, the mouth of Sauron wastes time trying to convince Aragorn and the others that Frodo died, even though the audience already knows that he hasn't. Frodo and Aragorn's fakeouts serve a purpose other than to shock, but Merry and Pippin's do not. Moving on to number four, Gandalf bargaining for Saruman's life. Saruman is one of the most interesting bad guys in fantasy, but his final showdown with Gandalf made us feel really awkward. When the movie said that Gandalf was trading Saruman's life for information, and that his life is only worth that information, we couldn't believe what we were hearing. In fact, this is one of those odd situations that feels more than a little unfinished. It's clear that it's trying to make the moment more tense, but in the end, it makes Gandalf's character and motivations look bad, which is not what the movie seems to want. Next up at number three, the formation of the Fellowship. The Fellowship is obviously one of the most important groups in the movies. This central importance is what makes Elrond's announcement so cringeworthy to a lot of people. We've always hated how forced and cheesy Hugo Weaving's delivery of this line felt, especially after all that build-up to it. Clearly, this is one of those parts that help people who haven't read the book before understand who the Fellowship is. At the same time, it's an example of a scene where the movie is just too obvious for its own good. Not to mention, number two, when Aragorn kills the Mouth of Sauron. The fact that Aragorn killed the Mouth of Sauron in cold blood is one of those changes to the story that bothers a lot of readers. We get that it's supposed to be a hell yeah moment, but the idea that Honorable King Aragorn would just kill someone who's essentially a diplomatic envoy doesn't sit right with us. In this case, the cringe comes from the fact that Aragorn has done in a major violation of all the rules of war. And more importantly, it's a betrayal of one of the most heroic characters in The Lord of the Rings. Finally, at number one, the CGI transition to Rivendell. In The Lord of the Rings, there are a lot of great places, but Rivendell, which is a beautiful and refined land, stands out. But the way it goes from Frodo dying on the banks of the River Brunin to this scene leaves something to be desired. The idea is great, but someone has actually said it looks like a PowerPoint slide transition, and now we can't get that out of our minds. This seems to be one of those cringeworthy moments to have to do with how old the movie is, at least in part. People who go to the movies today may be used to a different kind of film, so Jackson's work can sometimes seem old-fashioned in comparison. That's a wrap for this video. Which one of these Lord of the Rings moments made you cringe the most? Do you know of any other ones? Let us know in the comments below. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.